because you know what's heating the air? The sun is not heating the air. The sun is an intense source of visible light. The visible light is not absorbed by the atmosphere. Then it hits the ground. Where does the visible light go? It gets absorbed by Earth's surface. Earth's surface then re-radiates it into the air. Okay. But not as visible light. So infrared light comes up. If you have infrared trapping molecules in the air, yes, warms the air. If the ground is responsible for heating the air, then the closer you get to the ground, the, the higher the temperature is going to get. As you keep ascending, mm -hmm. you are farther and farther away from the heat source of the atmosphere. Okay. You would then expect what to happen. So, temperature drops. Right. And like I said, if you pay attention to this when you're in an airplane, a common temperature you'll see is like 40 below zero. That's what's happening in the troposphere. Now, tell me what the troposphere is it again. It is where all of our weather comes from. And we fly just Above. near the top. Some very high flying craft like the, the U-2. Right. That would go into the, the Now, do we fly at the top of the troposphere because... If you're above all the clouds, why fly through clouds if you don't have to? It's less turbulent. And air is thinner. So there's less, oh, resistance, less resistance to the movement of the plane. Then why doesn't the plane fall out the sky, man? It's going really fast. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, but you make an, an important point. There's an altitude above which mm -hmm. it would have to fly really, really, really fast to get enough air going below it to give it the lift. Gotcha. So the higher you go, the faster you have to travel to stay flying. So the SST, the Concord SST, the first and only ever supersonic transport for commercial aviation. That was up at 45,000 feet around there. Right. Currently, we fly in the 30,000, right, yeah. 35,000 feet. 